Drew at the Goulet Pen Channel recently dropped his list of top five starter fountain pens, and I was delighted to see the Twisby Swipe was on it, because I really like this thing. Yeah, technically it belongs to producer Mike, so I've essentially commandeered it. But was that wrong? I mean, he doesn't even call it by its proper name. He calls it the Slice. I suspect it's because the color is named Pear, but still, that's not a good excuse. So I don't feel bad for swiping his Slice. Hi, I'm Irene, and welcome to the Inkwork Studio, where sharing is the norm. And lest it sounds like I'm taking advantage of my partner, I'm the one who cleans and refills his fountain pens, so it all balances out. This particular swipe has a medium nib, and for now, this is one of my favorite fountain pens. The styling isn't exactly my jam. Not a fan of that clip, for one thing. But for a number of months, it's been a go-to pen for me. A really good, reliable writer. There are a couple of filling options with this pen, but I just stick with the spring plunger mode. It works great, so I haven't felt a need to use either the included piston converter or the cartridge. Not yet, anyway. All of those filling options are included in the package, and for less than 30 bucks. Crazy, right? Just a couple of reasons why I can solidly recommend the Twisby Swipe. This Alt Gold Groon by Rohr and Klingner is currently my favorite green ink. Not so dark that it looks black, and not so pale that it's unreadable. It's right in the sweet spot for me. Yeah, I like me some R&K. Their sketch ink has been part of my arting arsenal for a couple of years. Now I finally have one of their fountain pen inks. Sure, I still love sketch ink Lily and want to get a few more from that series, but this ink is actually formulated for fountain pens. There are other colors in the series, of course, and some of those are also on my wish list. In particular, Scabiosa. Cool name, right? It appealed to me due to its dusty purple shade and because it sorta sounds like a skin condition. So my macabre side was let down when I found out Scabiosa is just a flower. Whatever, it's still a nice color. When was the last time you awoke to someone yelling, get up sleepyhead? For me, it was today, or at least I thought it was, until I actually woke up and realized I was just dreaming about my mom. And when I say today, I mean this afternoon. Look, my sleep cycle is all askew and has been for several months. It's a good thing my schedule is flexible. But the main reason I'd slept so late today was because, for the first time in many years, I had dinner at a buffet. Sorry, there's no video footage, but I did imagine I was food tuber Mark Weens, loving every dish and doing his best Joey Lawrence impression. Oh, wow. Okay. Technically, Joey's catchphrase was, whoa, but they sound very similar. I actually never watched Blossom, the 1980s sitcom it comes from, but one cannot escape pop culture altogether. If we could, we wouldn't have to keep updating our slang vocabulary every few years. Speaking of new things, 
For YouTubers, there's a lot of focus on acquiring more new viewers, and I get it. It's all a numbers game. I don't necessarily like it, but I get it. So sometimes I worry that the existing audience feels taken for granted. Well, I'm telling you right now that seeing returning names in the comments is such a thrill. Not the, ah, I'm gonna die sort of thrill, but rather the, OMG, they came back sort. For example, the previous Derwent Drawing Pencils video was a treasure trove of good feels discourse. From Polgara28 enabling my slipper attachment to Sosumi, sorry, Sosumir4896, pointing out that spiders are, in fact, our friends. Yeah, <laughs> I admit it. In my head, I read your name as Sosumi. Sosumi! The point is, thanks. I appreciate all of you. You may have heard by now that Sailor has come out with a new fountain pen, one that's less than a hundred bucks. Okay, yes, they already had the La Cool and the Compass, but most of their other models are in the triple digits. The new Sailor model is called the Tuzu, which can be purchased for around $40 from some online retailers. Oh yeah, I'm interested. But if you're sitting on piles of money, there are also $1,000 pens out there from companies such as Visconti and Montblanc. By the way, if you haven't seen Wes Anderson's recent commercial for Montblanc, then pause this video, click the link in the description, and watch the best ever ad for a fountain pen right now. You can thank me later. Seriously, it was posted to the company's YouTube channel a couple of months ago, and it's got like 2 million views. It's a winner. Squirrel Friends update. The other morning, I pulled open the drapes and eagerly scanned the backyard, but to my disappointment, detected no critter activity. However, when I looked down, there was a gray squirrel standing with his front paws pressed against the glass door, looking very insistent. I don't know when it happened, but I also noticed our mini picnic table, the one that's critter-sized with a rod to hold corn cobs, well, it was upside down at the bottom of the steps. Look, there are times when I don't get around to backyard feeding time, so the mental image of a pissed off squirrel flipping that table hard enough to tumble off the deck is stuck in my head. And I'm frightened. Back to the topic of sharing, I want to share with you all one of the best things I've ever seen on YouTube. But to get there, we need to go through some setup. Recently, my niece sent me a link to a video titled The Spectacular Failure of the Star Wars Hotel. It's a four hour long deep dive into the immersively themed Galactic Star Cruiser experience. It was located near Disney World and only lasted for about a year and a half. No, I didn't watch it all in one sitting. I spaced it out into 30 minute increments over the course of a week. The point is, it was amazing. Sure, it was just one gal's POV, but it was well researched, funny, and highly entertaining. But that's actually not the video I was referring to when I said one of the best things on YouTube. No, that would be the video titled, There's Something Wrong with Hallmark's YouTube Channel, which happens to be from the same creator, Jenny Nicholson.
That's right. I enjoyed her take on the Star Wars Hotel so much that I went on to watch another five or six of her videos. And that led me to her years old gem where she commented on the now defunct Party 101 series on the official Hallmark Store's YouTube channel. And apparently I'm not the only fan because Jenny has more than a million subscribers and her Hallmark video alone has over 3 million views. Anyway, if you're looking for some laughs and have 20 minutes to spare, click on the link in the description. So I've shared some stuff here like this doodle, pen and ink thoughts, new things and old things, my fear of rodent rage, and even a couple of viewing suggestions. In my opinion, that's time well spent. And I had to self-edit on the fly just now because what was actually written in my notes was in my onion. I'm not taking the blame though because that was definitely a Google document autocorrection. Like how they're always slipping a D into Windsor and Newton. Not today, Google. So until next time, be creative when and where you can, whether it's doodling or painting or telling stories. And stay artsy, my friends.